Hi, I'm Rachel George and I'm in Los Angeles. And Jill Santa Benaz is in Nashville. And this is The Girl Boss Next Door. Hi, everybody. This is Jill Santa Benaz. Thank you so much for watching The Girl Boss Next Door. And we have. Hi, I'm Rachel George. And today's Girl Boss Next Door is. Amanda Page Cornette. <laughs> hey. Hey, Thank you Amanda. So How are y'all? Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to have Amanda on our show. She's not only in Nashville, just like I am. She is also one of our artists on our PR company, Nashville Entertainment Weekly PR. We've been blessed to work with her for uh, a, quite some time now. We're so lucky. Yeah. And we're actually having a, a CMA event coming up, which I haven't even told her about. So I'm oh. hoping she can be there <laughs> in June. Yes, <laughs> we're really excited to gear up and, and hopefully we can see her again. We don't get to see her too often, but we're so excited that she's here today. We have so many things to talk about besides her amazing songwriting and her being an artist. She has jewelry. She has woodworking that she does. Let's talk about it, Amanda. Okay. Well, what do you want to know about? Oh, earrings. Earrings. Okay. So <laughs> for some reason, I like started making feather earrings. A few years ago, out of feathers I got from my great uncle's farm, who my cousin, my I guess second cousin lives there now, and he, he had pheasants, and he oh. also had guineas. So the spotted ones are guinea feathers. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. that's so cute! The colors so are amazing. Having, well, I ended up having to buy some others that are colored, but the guinea feathers are actually from the farm, and no birds are hurt in the making of the earrings. I always go and collect Perfect. like feathers that have fallen <laughs> off. And I know like where the guineas roost. So when I'm whenever I'm up in oh. Southwest Virginia, I'll go and like collect a bunch of feathers. And all their pheasants are gone now, but I have quite a few of the earrings too. And some of the ones that um, I have since you picked that I sent pictures of also show some of the different colors of the pheasants because pheasants are gorgeous. Oh wow! I love that it's like a mix of like that. just natural um, feathers, and then you bought a couple of color ones and kind of just put together this really yeah. nice piece it's and it's got like meaning as well well and it's it's I don't know why but it's kind of become like my signature to wear like my feather earrings on stage because they are fun they're flowy they're super lightweight so they don't get in the way of anything but they're also show up but they're not so showy that they outshine my hair or whatever your <laughs> sex hair which I love <laughs> Nothing could outshine you. Nothing. I just, oh, I can see they really pop. I love lightweight earrings because there's nothing worse than buying something like with a dangle that's super heavy. I'm just like, no, I can't. And then I might, you know, wash myself on a plane. They're literally feather light. Terrible bun. Oh my gosh. Do you have them on your Instagram page? Um, I have them on my APC Create Instagram, Ooh, okay. Um, okay. and I, I can make them custom colors. I have a ton of colors. Um, the guinea feathers are all black and white because they're natural, and um, I do have a few pheasant feathers, but most of them are colored, and I have a lot of guinea feathers that I can use to make custom for people. So, so that it matches their eyes or whatever they wear normally. So, Ooh, outfits. I got to go through my closet. <laughs> see my color. I know. See my color scheme. Yes. Let's talk about the woodworking because I know that for <laughs> a girl, that is very unique. And I love that you're you're all about hands-on projects, just like your music. You're all about being original and true to where you come from because you're actually not originally from Nashville. Let's let's talk about where you're from because I think that that also plays a part in everything that you do and how creative you are. Absolutely. I'm from South Carolina um, originally, and I my dad taught me how to do a lot of stuff growing up, whether it was mending fences, whatnot. And then I started going to a mission camp when I was in high school, and I've been going ever since, except last year because it got canceled. And it got canceled. Oh. I mean, literally, it's been part of my life for more than a decade, and it's amazing. It's called Sakahatchee Summer Service. We actually I co-produced a documentary about it and oh, wow. I learned how to do a lot of roofing and I have my own roofing nail gun which is really entertaining to people because oh my goodness why <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> it's a different creative outlet than um 
the music. It's totally different side. It's like using more of the science side of my brain and figuring things out, the math side and having to finagle everything to make it work and try oh, trial and love? error, figuring out what doesn't work. <laughs> right. When you have such creative energy, though, it's like when you're not singing, when you're not writing music, when you're not doing jewelry, you still have energy. You know what I mean? And sometimes you just need a different outlet. I, I think it's really nice that you have so many different things that you that you can do because just doing one thing all the time, um, that energy can get a bit stale sometimes for me, especially. So I'm just like, you know what? I need something completely different right now. Maybe mm -hmm. physical, maybe not. Just take your mind somewhere else and then come back to your like music. Absolutely. And I've always said I'm, I feel like I'm blessed and cursed with well-roundedness. Um, I majored in exercise <laughs> science because I'm fascinated by anatomy, physiology. If it weren't for music, I probably would have done like orthopedic surgery or something. But I'm glad I didn't because that would have been a lot of school. And I was ready to be out when I was out. But I didn't want to major in music because I didn't want to lose my passion for it. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, besides besides everything that we've talked about, you're also a personal trainer and you're an actress. Yeah, I am. I am. It's been a little slow since COVID with the acting and stuff, but thankfully training's picking back up and it's a great way for me to have a brain break from all the creative stuff as well, because that's more my science brain. And it. it's really nice. I get to work with a lot of people who have orthopedic issues because of my athletic training background. So it's not just people wanting to just get fit, some of that, but I have a lot of people that have had knee issues or I have one guy on oxygen. Um, so I have anywhere from 23 years old to 87 years old and it's wow. a great, app. and it's great because I can work for myself, which allows me to work part-time in that field and full-time in music, so. Do you think um, like working with all different types of people in different kind of areas, um, that that helps you creatively as well. I mean, do any of these things kind of intertwine in a way? Absolutely. I mean, I think dealing with people in general helps songwriting because you want songwriting to be as real as it can be. You want it to be authentic. You don't want it to just be made up. So getting being around different people, around different abilities, around different lifestyles, different lifetimes even, I mean, I learned so much from even some of my older clients. They'll tell me stories. And sometimes you never know if that's going to click and make a, bring me an idea for a song. You never know. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I can relate a little bit to that because I, I write too. So, I, you know, whenever you meet somebody new or just a different environment, you take yourself out of that. You'll get stories and you'll get other people's perspectives. And you're like, oh, you know, I hear a song coming. You know, not really, but I mean. <laughs> For me, it's like, oh, I, I can feel a story coming from that, or I can get some character ideas from that. So totally, you know, just um, you do so many different things. That's amazing. Oh, just going back, though, do you have any pieces <laughs> of your um, woodwork that we can see? I do. And I know I sent some pictures in, but I'm working on this one right now. It's a oh bit of fun most of the time. So one side is going to be crossed, and the other side is not finished because it's going to have a drawer. Okay, so I cool. first attempt at making a drawer, so I have had a lot of trial and error, which is why this one's taking so long. So, <laughs> and oh I, find I, I just got an electric router, so I, I think that's going to help with it too. So, um, one of my favorite pieces I would love to show you, I think I sent pictures of it. It's a double sided guitar, it's an electric guitar on one side and acoustic on the other. And if my friend's dog hadn't eaten it, I would show it to you. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I also have, like, a big, uh, I went to University of Florida, so I'm a big gator fan. So I have a big gator that I made that's about, probably about a foot and a half long that I oh, cut wow. the wood in half and then carved it out. And, I mean, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, let's see if I can do this. I'm a terrible artist if, when it comes to drawing. But what I've realized is I can unveil something from something, but I can't like create it on paper. Right. You <laughs> just kind of wait, you just kind of go straight in like a sculpture. You yes. just like, I'm <laughs> it is. I can, oh. I can draw what's under there, but I can't make it on a flat paper. <laughs> okay, I'll draw and then you can do it. Cause I can draw, there but there's no okay. way. <laughs> I'll just check with you. I basically, I, I won't say like failed wood, woodwork class, but I came very close. <laughs> that would be awesome. I wish I'd had woodworking class. 
I think they just kind of, when I was still in school, they just kind of introduced it and they were, you know, they were saying, okay, um, who wants to do, you know, electronics and woodwork? And I was like, I would have been like, me not, but I mean, I was like, maybe it's better idea that I try that than any science. So like, there you okay. go. <laughs> yeah, I was terrible. I shouldn't touch anything. <laughs> well, you be very careful. I um, have quite a few uh, scars from some of my, using some of my tools. I'm much more careful now about wearing uh, cut gloves that don't let you yeah. cut thing and stuff. So I've had a few little uh, accidents that <laughs> thankfully haven't been permitted. You're a lady, yes, you have to be careful. I think we did woodworking, I think we were in junior high when we did woodworking and we made like just a few things because it's like a half a semester. Mm -hmm. And you you do and you work on it for like weeks. Like we made like an oversized paper clip. And of course you just take this stuff home to your parents and you're like here. And I remember we made like a pot holder of some kind and just like little things like, you know, that you wouldn't have to necessarily chisel down. Like I think if you chisel something smaller and smaller and get close to like your fingers, then that's a little dangerous. But if it's like yeah. oversized and you don't really have to, you know get too close to it it's, yeah. it's kind of safer so yeah we uh, we have be fun. very careful with a planer planers are dangerous very dangerous oh. <laughs> i think i made a snowman but i remember taking it home and the first thing my mom asked she was like what's this <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't even know, I remember the snowman because it was like wood and the electrics combined right so the oh, snowman really? his little carrot nose his little buttons were supposed to light up which they kind of did and didn't but I, you know the fact that they, she didn't know what it was I was like it's a <laughs> oh. I was so bad that's awesome I don't know anything about the electronic side of things so that would be fun <laughs> oh, so, no. when you, so where no, do you have no. some of your good pieces that we can see um, I have, I sent Jill some pictures of some of them, okay. as some of the ones that I've done in the past and some that I have now. Um, and you can go to APC Creates on Instagram and see some of the artwork I've created, um, whether it's the sculptures or my earrings or whatnot. I also, during the pandemic, have made masks. And Ooh. for some reason, like, I hate that people can't see you smiling with masks. I brought one of them in here. I know. I made clear masks. It's very cute. And oh, I have like, I love those. Here, and it's not a face shield. Unfortunately, some places that have like really strict policies are like the all clear one. They're like, that's a oh, face shield. Okay. Like, no, it covers the same amount. It goes under right. my chin. It does. So, yeah, but it's uh, yeah. for some reason, some people are freaked out by them, <laughs> which is hilarious, actually. But most people are like, oh, I can see somebody smile. But you also have to remember to not make bad faces when you have them. I know. Right. <laughs> you control your face sometimes. <laughs> forget. Yeah, people forget. It's it's hard. You forget. I want to talk about your music because we we really haven't um, been able to dive into that yet. You have so many songs out there, uh, so many beautiful songs that you've written and that you actually have music videos for. And yeah. uh, people, yes, people do need to check out your website, amandapagecornet.com. And they also need to check out your YouTube page to see all of your amazing music videos. Yeah. And you've done these, yeah, you've done these music videos over a span of a few years because you actually did one when you were at, uh, in college, right? Well, no, we did it actually when I was up here, but we wrote a song really? that, we wrote the song Swamp Love and it was more of a Bayou song. And uh, okay. we got the opportunity, my band and I got the opportunity to play an alumni event for the UF up here when we were playing Vanderbilt one weekend. <laughs> And so on a whim, I decided to change all the words to make them fit the Florida Gators. And oh, so cute. many people come up to us and say, where can I get that song? And we were like, uh, it hasn't been recorded yet. So we recorded <laughs> oh my gosh. And um, I met with a, a, a lady that I had met. She was a student director that I met when she was at Watkins Film School. And she had contacted me off and on, said, if you ever need a music video, blah, 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 let me know, because she graduated and was trying to go professional. And I contacted her and I said, so I have an idea. I said, what if we do a music video, but it's going to have a niche because it's going to be a Florida Gator one. But that's such a right. big market, like alumni associations, especially the Gator Nation is huge. 
So it's the niche video, but things like that can go viral. And it was so much fun. And we did a Kickstarter campaign and we actually got to go down to Gainesville, Florida, and we got permission to be in the swamp, the, the football oh stadium. Gosh. We also were in a swamp, which was oh, wow. Big. For some people that didn't know what was going on, they were like, oh, we're going to an actual swamp. We're like, we are tomorrow. This is called the <laughs> So it was a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> what shoes did you have? You... Oh, I, know. <laughs> I wore normal boots in most of it, but in the swamp part, the stylist had given me these awful wedges. Oh, my God. It was July. No, it was August, like the first week of August in Florida. In the humidity, it was probably 98 degrees before oh. the humidity. And as soon as we finished the swamp, the swamp filming, I took those off and I was like, I never want to see these again. Thankfully, I gave them back to the stylist. I was like, I never, I'm not, I'm not good in wedges. I would rather have three inch heels than wedges for some reason. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine. Yeah. Your poor little feet. <laughs> well, and I was trying really hard because I didn't want to be a diva. So at one point I was getting really hot and they were changing the jib or whatever, the camera thing. And I was like, is it okay if I sit for a minute? <laughs> my hair and makeup girl comes up and she's like this far away. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're burning up. <laughs> but I had oh my like, gosh. leather top on and black pants on. In the <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was humidity is <laughs> oh yeah, it was, it was, a great experience. My band and I have been together for over 10 years. And uh, so it was, it was really a lot of fun. And thankfully, because we reached out to other students, uh, we got a lot of people to volunteer. So we got a, a really great music video for a lot less than it would normally be. But it's, you know, the director ended up, she's been working for Dolly Parton pretty much ever since then. So. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. It's Justin like you helped us get her start. Them. Yeah, right. I like so I like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And you've had incredible music videos since then. And what I love too is that you you do such an amazing job in your music videos. Sometimes people are stiff, but you can tell that you're an actress. You can tell that you're experienced in front of the camera because you you really I mean, when it comes from a singer, you know, somebody being a part of a music video, because sometimes they don't even use singers are a little shy or they're they're just not used to the camera or whatever. But I'm really glad that you're you're like front and center in your music videos. You're representing the music that you're putting out. And mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And you get to do you get to choose your wardrobe most of the time or do you ask like ideas from people or what do you do? Oh, I definitely get help. I definitely get help. I mean, I, I do ask, I mean, I do pick out some of it, but like, I am very thankful that for the most part, every time I, I've had a hair and makeup girl, they've become really good friends with me. I've become really good friends with them and they're also really good at clothing. And so they help me out a lot, which is awesome. We just filmed a new music video Sunday and wow, makeup girl couldn't make it. So we did a video tutorial. So we were on Facebook Messenger and her telling me, okay, oh, take wow. this color and do this and take this color and do this <laughs> make it up and How fun. a suede brown skirt a few years ago for me and we were like we need to fringe it so I fringed it halfway up so I ended up wearing it I was super excited so it'll be in the next video that comes out I was just gonna ask you what's what's happening now like what's next for you but you just told us oh my gosh how exciting yeah. Really fun. So I'm excited. So we're working on figuring out the next date for my next single release and hopefully it'll correlate with the um, video as well. And it's it's been fun. I've gotten to do a lot of videos with young filmmakers. Uh, the Carolina Coast video, a friend of mine is a professor at Lipscomb Film School and she had her whole entire class edit it. And, oh, and she, yeah. And so she sent me the five best edits and huh to pick the winner and I got to go in and explain to the class it was actually the day before they shut down for COVID and wow. they, I got to go in and talk with the class and say this is what I loved about this from an artist's perspective this is what I maybe would think about doing differently um and I got to do that for the top five and the girl that won it Amber Wolf she was so excited she was in disbelief it was her first time editing so wow good Though. How exciting! I bet what it was each one completely different. It's just each filmmaker's like idea about how they wanted the story to be told. 
Yes. And some of them, like some of them could, didn't put all the scenes in there. And some of them did like we had, I guess, three different scenes basically. And one of them was not that important. And so some people used it. Some people didn't. I ended up liking the ones with it better, but she purposely chose ones that didn't have that in there to see if I would notice it. Right. Um, and the coloring different. And really, I think that that's what it really came down to was the shot choices and the the color treatment that the that Amber put on there were excellent. And so there were some things where I said, you know, when you're looking at shots to choose, make sure it, it makes the actors and the artists look their best. So, yeah, sometimes, of course. you know, every now and then there would be a like unflattering photo of somebody in the video. And I'm like, we got to make sure that, you know, and, but uh, Amber did such a good job of picking really flattering um, photos and shots and stuff. And the color correction was just perfect. So. Oh, that's amazing. So much that goes into it that I don't even understand. So. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you're used to, you're used to being on set for a long period of time because you're an actress, because sometimes, I mean, how long do music videos take usually? Because it's your music video. I'm sure you're kind of like, no, let's make sure we get another good shot. It really depends. Um, like the Swamp Love one, we, we had planned really well because we were doing it on location. So we drove literally the whole film crew, director, hair makeup artist, and I all drove down with my trailer and, or with my, did I have the trailer? No, it's my truck. And we drove down to Florida on a Friday night and my band met us down there cause they were already down there. And we filmed Saturday all day. We filmed all day Sunday. We got up wow. and drove back Monday. And I mean, it was long, long days. And not all of them are like that, especially um, if, if you're doing different scenes if you're doing them all in town, you can kind of do one scene this day and then do another scene another day and then put them together. So that's not right. as bad. And most of it, I've been very fortunate to work with people who are still learning as well, which is great for them and me um, because yeah. it's just both experience. And that's been really awesome too. So we have to work around schedules and stuff, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. So. So nice. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of, of Steven Tyler, we were, TJ and I were lucky enough to interview Steven Tyler on the red carpet of the Nashville Film Festival. I think it was uh, last year, the year before, but what he said about coming to Nashville and the whole Nashville experience, he said, you know, people are just so excited about the music. They're so excited about the music, whatever genre that you're in, you're just so happy to be here and be a part of it. And I know that your band, you and your band, you're, you all are so lucky to have each other because you guys have have been with each other for so long. And I know it's difficult to get a group of people together that are really passionate about it. So shout out to them and, and you guys for really making it work because you guys have an amazing sound. Thank you. And they've been playing together the twins whole life. So, cause my, my whole band yeah. um, is a uh, older brother, Randall Scott Peterson on guitar and then Sherry Peterson Tennell, the little sister and her twin brother on drums, Sean. Oh, so wow. it's been a lot of fun and it is, People don't realize this, but it's very rare for a solo artist to play with the same band for a very long time in Nashville. Yeah. And so I, I believe that. I consider it an honor that they still trust me and we respect each other enough that we want to play together and they know that I'm not going to take advantage of their time. I try to make sure that they know they're appreciated because without them, my sound really wouldn't have become what it has. So. Oh yeah, and you can tell you can tell that it's evolved, and I love that that you know every once in a while you can see your band in your music videos, and it's it's really cool just to see you guys all together and and jamming basically. I mean, you guys are we have it's, it's just really cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah. really like camaraderie. We don't have to act. We really do love interacting with each other. Um, we had to have a fill-in drummer for this most recent video. Um, and he was great. Um, so it was, it was a really, I'm thankful. He was so good. Um, and, but I'm so used to dancing with my bass player. She's, I always say she's the hottest bass player in Nashville. And I was <laughs> another chick in the band because it, it just keeps it kind of balanced. And then I love being oh, able yeah. to over and pretend to play lead guitar with Randy. It's, it's, we Cheap. have fun. If you see us live, then if you're not having fun, you probably should just go home. <laughs> so 
Exactly. Exactly. I know that I know that TJ, um, TJ's known you longer than I have. And, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad again that that we're so blessed to be working with you. And, and thank you again for your time today and, and sharing your, your amazing jewelry, your woodworking with us and, and your just your knowledge of music videos, because like you said, it's the whole thing is a process and, and putting it all together and really making time for it because it's your art and it's important. Absolutely. And you can find my music I do have a full album out, oh my backwards or not, but it's called the Trouble album, and um, we recorded it down in Muscle Shoals, and it's 15 songs, which is unusual these days, nice. but we wanted to make an album that we loved, and it's a mixture. It's co I call it Southern Rock and Soul, and you can find it everywhere, Amazon, Apple, Google, anywhere you find music, Spotify, Pandora, and please check it out. And I've been giving this PSA ever since the pandemic started. But if you like the music that has gotten you through the pandemic, make sure you're buying music because artists yes. aren't able to perform as much now and that's how they make a living. And so if you like the music, please, please, please buy it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, support Amanda. <laughs> please. <Yeah. laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations on the new music video that you just Thank did. You. Congratulations on your music. Um, I'm going to go look at all of your feather earrings right now. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for being our girl. Kathy, it's a pleasure. <laughs> As always, you can find our guest links and their social media. You can go, please follow Amanda Page. Uh, they're going to be posted on our Facebook page at the Girl Boss Next Door. Awesome. This has been Jill Santos Rachel George, and thank you so much to Amanda Page Cornette. Thanks for having me, y'all. <laughs>